It was George Stevens who said, at one time this guild looked out for the little fellow. Now who is the man to say that I'm not the little fellow? Not today, perhaps, not tomorrow, but maybe in a few years. And that was the purpose of the guild when the founders started it. Are you now, or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? The height of the McCarthy era. Being accused of a connection to the Red Menace became a black stain on innocent lives, particularly in Hollywood, where the fear of an industry blacklist was real. There was a gradual spread of panic on the one hand, and of intolerance on the other. And there was a group of people who tried to frighten other guild members from expressing their opinions and intimidating them into signing loyalty oaths. It is a wonderful thing, the Director's Guild, leading the processing of planting the stars and stripes on this industry. As epic a figure in Hollywood as the films he made, Cecil B. DeMille's standing as a director was unequaled. But his unyielding anti-communist pursuits not only jeopardized the careers of innocent people, but also the future of the DGA and its president, Joe Mankiewicz. DeMille actually tried to putsch in the night and sent motorcycle riders out and tried to get a vote to disavow Mankiewicz. DeMille and his faction on the board provided ballots only to those members loyal to their cause. If DeMille's scheme succeeded to recall Mankiewicz over his unwillingness to support a bylaw requiring the membership to sign a loyalty oath, a filmmaker's career would be over, along with any director who sided with him. The only open ally I had was George Stevens. He believed in loyalty, but not forced loyalty oaths. He certainly didn't believe in an election by a signed ballot. Stevens was a two-term president of the Guild, who left Hollywood at the peak of his career and spent the next four years filming combat operations in Europe during World War II. Mankiewicz called for a meeting of the entire Guild DeMille and his allies on the board conspired to stop it. No one has accused Mr. Mankiewicz of being a communist, and he has every right to oppose this by law and refuse to take the loyalty oath, but no right to use his office as president to obstruct the will of the Guild. And who are some of the men who signed the petition in his support? Troubled waters attract strange specimens. In your tabulation of the 25 petitioners, Cecil, the men who opposed your requirement for a loyalty oath, how many men were in uniform? How many men were in uniform when you were wrapping yourself in the flag? 25 Resolute Guild members signed a petition calling for an open meeting. Among them, Billy Wilder, Houston, John Sturgis, and William Wilder. October 22, 1950, a seven-hour battle of wills with the future of the Guild hanging in the balance. The assistant directors at that time had no vote, and they were sort of relegated to the balconies, like the rabble. And below them sat the majesty of the senior directors. And without exception, they were there, and I have never witnessed a more emotional meeting uh, in my entire experience. Uh, DeMille spoke and read off in an attempt to show the foreign influences that were at work. Mr. DeMille stood up and said, uh, this document was signed by Mr. Weiler, by Mr. Wilder, by Mr. Zinnemann, and he made a point of pronouncing it in that way to, to accentuate the fact, fact that we weren't born in this country. George waited until exactly a perfect moment of timing, and he then read an account of the detective work he had done. First, he resigned from the board and said, I want no part of this. I want no part of this as an American, as a director, or as a human being. He says, because this is a conspiracy. 
I said, there's the indictment. I'm one of the board members that's responsible for this. There's only one fair thing I can do. I resign. And I recommend that every other man on this board that's responsible for this in any way by omission, as I am, or by being a party to this conspiracy, resign. That was when John Ford got up and said, my name is Ford, I direct Westons. And then he looked over at the mill. And he said, Cecil, look, we've been together since 1915. I respect you, Cecil. And my heart was sinking. I said, my God, that everything that Stevens did, Ford, you're going to wipe this out? He says, you make movies better than ever, that the world wants to see, and nobody in this room can touch you. He said, but I don't like you, Cecil. And I don't like the goddamn thing you stand for. George brought all the influence to bear that he possibly could to direct these assaults away from these people. And in fact, defend the, the Constitution of the United States. He was, he was a very true patriotic American, in the best sense. In the end, the vote to recall Mankiewicz failed, and DeMille's conspiracy ended in disgrace. The directors, all of them, went back to the business of making movies. Not everyone in Hollywood was able to do that. And the Guild, by virtue of its members' courage and integrity, had found peace in its own civil war. <laughs>